Ladies and gentlemen, when we first started to hear about Threadripper, it's fair to say that many were surprised that AMD had the sheer audacity to compete with Intel in the HEDT market. And it's very exciting. Intel have had the run of the place for a number of years now. Yes, Capsation for many was about answering the questions of RX Vega, but let's just be honest. In some ways, Threadripper is perhaps more exciting. Providing content professionals, or anyone else that just needs a ludicrous amount of processing power, a viable alternative to Intel. In fact, one can also make a very compelling argument that Intel were left, well, scrambling with some rather rash and odd decisions with the X299 platform. That's not to say that I dislike the X299 platform. I did say that I really enjoy it in our review, and it has very impressive performance, but... From a sheer value standpoint, it's very hard to argue that the Ryzen Threadripper is an incredibly attractive proposition. So in this very video, we're going to be discussing it. So first things first, we're going to go through the basic specifications and then the pricing and then start talking about performance and other such things. So unfortunately, we don't have information on the 1950, the 1920 or 1900 non-X. We can presume that they're going to mirror the 1700X and 1700 in difference. In other words, perhaps uh, slightly lower clock speeds, perhaps slightly less over overclockability, that type of thing, and of course a lower price point. What we do have is official confirmation of the 1950X, the 1920X, and the 1900. Speaking broadly for a moment, you have 16, 12, and finally 8 cores, along with 8 megabytes, 32 megabytes of level 2 slash level 3 cache, which by the way is identical on both the 1950X and the 1920X, with the 1900 having 4 megabytes and 16 megabytes respectively. Now, to me, the interesting thing is the raw clock speed. We have a base clock of the 1950X at 3.4 GHz, a turbo of 4 GHz, the base clock of the 1920X at 3.5 and 4 GHz respectively, and finally the 1900X we have 3.8 versus 4 for the turbo speed. These clock speeds closely mirror the 1800X processor. And just for a moment, yes, the TDP is 180 watts, which is not exactly low. However, the sheer number of cores here is just damn impressive. I mean, 16 cores, 32 threads isn't quite as much as the 7980XE from Intel. But A, that's going to be just ridiculously expensive. And B, it's not out for a number of months. Looking at AMD's comparison, it's obvious what they're trying to do. They're trying to show off that AMD own product is better value than Intel. They're not necessarily going purely from a performance standpoint, although we do get into performance stuff in just a moment. What they have done is show off two processors against the i9-7900X and one processor against the i7-7820X. We'll start with that one first. The 1900 Threadripper versus the i7-7820X, even number of cores, 5% megabyte at 5% in terms of cache, uh, same number of DDR4 memory channels, a great deal number of additional PCIe lanes. Don't forget, whatever Threadripper you go with has 64 PCIe lanes, and the price is minus 8%. The 1920X, 20% additional cores, 60% additional cache, and 36% additional PCIe lanes. And finally, the i9-7900X, 60% additional cores, 68% additional cache, and finally, PCIe lanes. Now, cache is not exactly the be-all and end-all. Different architectures have different ways of handling data, so cache isn't necessarily comparable one thing to the other. However, what is comparable is pricing. If you're spending a thousand US dollars for the sake of argument on one processor, and this is what I suspect Intel are kind of a bit concerned about, and AMD are definitely pushing to their advantage. If you're spending a thousand bucks on the 7900X, you could get an additional six cores, and that is a lot of additional cores, to say the least, plus those additional PCIe lanes if you decided to go the Threadripper option. And here's where things get stickier for Intel, and that is performance. Unfortunately, we don't have single thread performance yet from Threadripper. I doubt it's going to be that much different from a Ryzen 7 clock comparably, because obviously in single thread workloads, memory bandwidth from the quad channel memory probably isn't going to make that much of a difference. So we can probably just say, okay, well, if you've got a um, 
comparable Skylake processor or Skylake X processor and then put that against the Ryzen 7, whatever CPU you want at the same clock speed, it's probably going to be roughly on par minus a percent or two. But what does start to become concerning for Intel is the price proposition, value proposition of the 7900X versus the 1950X. Honestly, this is a big discussion in and of itself, and you can see the results on screen yourself. For example, POV Array 3.7, 31% difference, 14% for Adobe Premiere. Um, handbrake, 20%. 7-zip, 27%. And this one is certainly an owie, 55% for Veracrypt. Now, I'll grant you a couple of things. Firstly, well, rather obviously, these are workloads which AMD have chosen because, well, quite simply, they probably favor the Threadripper architecture. It's going to be very interesting to see how this compares across more benchmarks. So, for example, is it the same if you're using a wider suite of benchmarks? Well, unfortunately, we don't know that information yet because, quite honestly, it's just not at the hands of reviewers. But for folks who need a lot of I.O., it's very hard to argue with the sheer value proposition of the 1950X. I mean, 64 PCIe lanes. Now, don't forget, four of those are essentially cordoned off. They're for system usage. But that does leave you with 60, which means that if you're going with, let's say, SLI or Crossfire Graphics Solutions, you're still left with ample bandwidth for other devices, so storage devices like NVMe. So if you want to plug in, let's say, a couple of M2 drives, you don't have to worry about cannibalizing bandwidth from SATA ports, most likely. And of course, AMD are quite happy to bring this into price versus performance when it comes to Premiere, uh, I'm sorry, when it comes to the 1920X, and have shown, by and large, you do get a small price performance benefit with the 1920X compared to the i9-7900X. Quite honestly, this is probably because the 7900X excuse me, has slightly higher clock speeds, so obviously that does benefit the Intel processor. It's going to be very interesting to see how well Ryzen Threadripper overclocks, and obviously we're going to have to wait on that. It's probably going to take, you know, people to kind of really start tweaking and perhaps even a couple of BIOS updates for power consumption and all of the, the normal things to kind of settle down. Release date, it looks like the 1950 and 1920X CPUs are going to go on sale on the 10th of August. You can start pre-ordering them today, whereas the Octa-Core, the 8-Core model, the 1900, is not going to hit store shelves until the 31st of August. Honestly, I do feel that the the uh, 1900X is still a bit weird to exist. I do feel that most, um, obviously, your scenario might differ. So, in some areas, I can certainly see that if you've got a couple of graphics cards and you've got a lot of storage needs and you've got an a lot of need for memory, but you don't necessarily need a whole bunch of CPU cores. I can possibly see the argument to go with, say, the, the 1900, but I do feel that the pricing here, especially when you're going to like the upper echelons, I can certainly suspect many people, especially if the 1920 is quite decent in terms of price, I do suspect many people want to go with at least 12 cores, 24 threads, if you're plonking down this money. Obviously, motherboards themselves are not cheap anyway, so it's not like you can just kind of go cheap into the Threadripper uh, lineup. And that's it, really. It's just a weird situation to be in. I feel that Intel needs to cut the prices of the i9 lineup. Um, and I'm not saying that purely because I feel that Intel are going to like lose in every benchmark. Intel blatantly are going to win in some benchmarks and lose in other benchmarks. That's just how it is. But I suspect many people are just going to do the core count number. They're just going to look at the number of cores, a basic kind of, eh, well, okay, I'm going to get slightly less single thread performance, but I'm doing a lot of editing. Let's face it, you're not necessarily going to be buying an X299 or an X399 setup for single thread performance. If you're doing that, it's just bizarre. And you might as well either go with a Ryzen 7 or wait a couple of months and probably grab, let's say, the 8700K, the Coffee Lake processor from Intel, which I still feel could be really weird uh, and possibly even disrupt and cannibalize a lot of Intel's X299 sales. In fact, the 7800 is just baffling to me for it to exist. And as I've said numerous times, and I'm sure many of you have as well, the 7740K, for example, is just, I don't know what it's there for, as well as the 6400K. 
uh, 76 of 40k. Just absolutely bizarre processors. With all of that said, we will continue to cover Fred Ripper and uh, do a review of it when we can. Um, I'm speaking to a couple of sources at the moment and they're waiting for confirmation when they're going to be getting their review sample in so we can grab them, uh, grab them, excuse me, and then we can do a review. Obviously, we did do one for the X299 platform. I still have the 7820X processor review coming up pretty soon. Uh, and a couple other reviews as well, as I said in a different video. So do check out the channel if you want lots of reviews, lots of benchmarks, and, well, some other fun projects I am working on. So that's about it for now. I am going to be very curious, mighty curious, how the next several months play out. Honestly, I'm good with this. I'm, I'm actually good with AMD to be on top on the CPU market. Not because I have anything against Intel or because I'm pro AMD. Honestly, I... I've used both. I've got systems which are both, and I think that's the best way to be. I, I just want the best value for everyone, especially, you know, when I'm recommending a product, because it's much more exciting to say, hey, but this is on the horizon, or this is the best value. And it's just good for us as customers. It's good for us in terms of the ecosystem. And, well, it's just kind of nice, really, to have a nice uh, variety of different hardware. Hey, this is why we like tech, right? Because we like to see new exciting things. We like to see one company jump in front of the other company because this is how leaping works in the industry. This is how we see leap, leapfrogs of performance in the industry. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.